Hey cousins, welcome back to the channel. How are y'all doing today? So we're going to talk about what's going on in the Red Sea. Um, and make sure you try to stay to the end because um, I'm going to start putting things at the end of my videos. Maybe not all of them, but some of them when I feel moved to do so. Um, thank y'all for being here again. And let's get into what is exactly happening because... <sighs> So many issues have come up with the Red Sea and them forcing ships to stop actually moving and with ships being rerouted from the Panama Canal, taking longer. Now it is affecting livestock, you guys, which in turn will, <clears throat> excuse me, which in turn will affect um, our supply whether it's here in the United States or the UK, it's going to affect our supply um, because of the war that's happening in the Red Sea. If you're not aware of that, that is what this is all about. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, if you can give this video a like, it does help it get out to more people. So more people will know what is happening. <clears throat> so here we go. It says a ship carrying thousands of sheep and cattle is marooned off the coast of Australia in 40 Celsius heat after it was forced to abort its voyage through the Red Sea. Y'all forgive me. I don't know what's going on with my throat today. It says the vessel left Australia on the 5th of January for Israel, but was diverted in the middle of the month due to threats of attacks by Yemen's Houthi militia and forced to turn back. What is 40 Celsius heat converted over? If a thermometer indicates 40 degrees Celsius, the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit is 104. This is from Ouija. Y'all, 104 degrees? Animals in the heat? This is insane. Okay, so the 16,000 sheep and 2,000 cattle are now in limbo before the decision is made to offload them in Australia or export them via a longer route around Africa to Israel. Farm and exporters groups say the animals on board are in good health, but have slammed the situation as being, I guess, too much for the animals. I don't believe that those animals are doing well in 104 degrees, but who am I to say that? So someone named Josh Wilson, a member of the parliament, uh, says the animals ordeal shows the live export trade is rotten to its core. What is being contemplated is a 60 day voyage for 14,000 sheep on a stinking hot and literally stinking metal vessel. Israel is a key export market for Australia's agriculture industry with 86,000 sheep worth $6.5 million. 10,848 cattle were $14 million traded in the first three months of 2023. The Houthis started attacking Western commercial shipping containers using the Red Sea, which sees around 12% of global trade worth $790 billion uh, pass through it every day. I'm sorry, every year after Israel began its war with Hamas in October. So in response, of course, the U.S. and the U.K. conducted retaliatory strikes on the Houthi targets across Yemen in a measure to deter future attacks. But y'all, they still attack him. That's why they were told they cannot have ships moving through the Red Sea right now. Everything is on a pause, meaning the container crunch has begun. 
ships are waiting to get through, go through the Red Sea. By the time they do get through the Red Sea, it'll probably be months later. And so ports are going to be backed up. Supplies are not going to get out. And you're going to start to see that in stores, not just grocery stores, but in all aspects of anything that we do in shipping and exporting. So it says Saudi Arabia and the U.S. have accused Iran of fully enabling the rebel group to attack Israel and Western ships in the Red Sea. Iran denies the allegations and says the Houthis are autonomous. Now, the U.S. did attack a ship to the Houthis to give them whatever uh, ammunition they needed for this war. So we are at war, but experts say that Houthis, along with Gaza's Hamas in Lebanon's um, Hezbollah, form parts of Iran's axis of resistance, a military alliance built over four decades to oppose Israeli and American power in the Middle East. The Axis group comprises of violent proxies across Yemen, Syria, Iraq, Iran, Lebanon, Palestine, um, coordinated by Iran's Quds Force, the foreign arm of IRGC. Will they make it those extra miles that they have to go? 10,000 kilometers away. Hmm. Even if the animals make it there, they would have to be quarantined after being on that ship for so long. They have a strict biosecurity control, um, which will put them in a quarantine. Though it was stressed that health and welfare were high priority. Australia's government says is by security rules. Some of the toughest on the planet have kept the country free from many of the world's most invasive pests and disease. And that is going to be the issue. Will they even be viable once they get there? Will they be able to use the sheep however they were going to use them? Or will they have to destroy them? Y'all can let me know what y'all think down in the comments. This is just a crazy story. <clears throat> Absolutely crazy, crazy story. So, hold on. I'll read a couple of scriptures here <laughs> in light of the sheep. So Jeremiah 56 says, my people have been lost sheep. The shepherds have led them astray, turning them away on the mountains. From mountain to hill, they have gone. They have gotten their fold. Matthew 26 says, then Jesus said to them, you will all fall away because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. Ezekiel 34 reads, the word of the God came to me, son of man, prophecy against the shepherds of Israel, prophecy and say to them, even to the shepherds, thus says the Lord God, all, shepherd of, all shepherds of Israel who have been feeding yourselves should not shepherds feed the sheep? You eat the fat, you clothe yourselves with the wool, you slaughter the fat ones, but you do not feed the sheep. The weak you have not strengthened, the sick you have not healed, the injured you have not bound up, the strayed you have not brought back, the lost you have not sought. And with force and harshness, you have ruled them. So they were scattered because there was no shepherd and they became food for all the wild beast. My sheep were scattered. 
And like the sheep, we the people are scattered. We want what we want, but don't want to sacrifice for it. Don't want to um, obey the word of God. And so we will have to bear what comes out of that. And what comes out of that is war. Matthew 24, 6, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Matthew 7, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of of birth pains. Then you'll be handed over to the per persecuted and put to death. And you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people because of the increase of wickedness. The love of most will grow cold, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. So when you see standing in the holy place, the abomination that causes desolation spoken of through the prophet Daniel. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let one of the housetop go down to take anything out of the house. Let no one in the field go back to get their cloak. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. Pray that your fight, your flight will not take place in winter or on the Sabbath. For then there will be great distress, unequaled from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equaled again. If those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. But for the sake of the Elect those days will be shortened. At that time, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Messiah, or there he is, do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even when elect. And, and you can say that in this year of elections, all of them will say what they know you want to hear, but do not just listen to what they are saying. Watch what they are doing because actions speak louder than words could ever. Don't be the lost sheep. And if you are, maybe one day, maybe one day you'll be found. I'll see y'all in the next video. Remember that I love you, but God loves you more. He created only one you. Be the best you that you can be. And when you are, go out and spread God's love. Because God is love. That is what he would want you to do. But first, he would want you to love yourself. Because if you cannot love yourself or do not know how to love yourself, how will you know how to give love to others and receive love in return? Peace, love, and light. Thanks for being here on the channel. I'll see you guys in the next video.